While the point guard position in the NBA used to be dominated by past first guys like Steve Nash and Jason Kidd, in more recent years, we've seen an evolution, jump-started by the jump shot of Steph Curry. Steph's splash onto the scene pushed the position towards elite shot making. And now we have a crop of guards like Dame Willard and Kyrie Irving paving the way for the next generation. And no one guard represents that brand of point guard play more in the 2021 NBA draft than Florida's Trey Mann. Mann is a step back nightmare, a chef in the kitchen that will shake you straight out of the gym. One of college basketball's premier isolation shot creators, Mann has been a hot name in draft circles. However, while the shot making was impressive, NBA front offices will need to know if Mann is just a gunner or if he can develop the playmaking jobs to lead an NBA offense. Welcome to Film Set, an NBA draft deep dive by Corey Tullaba, highlighting how a prospect might make an impact when they step onto an NBA floor. Perhaps the most valuable skill for a lead ball handler to have in today's NBA is the ability to create your own shot. With the NBA playoffs in full swing, we've seen the importance of being able to just go get a bucket when defenses tighten up and teams can game plan for offensive sets. And Trey Mann is a bucket getter. When you watch Trey Mann hoop, you'll immediately notice how deadly he is as a shooter off the bounce. Mann has logo range, and teams that dare go under ball screens will pay as Mann isn't shy to let it fly. While most teams don't want to go under screens, Trey is very crafty with the ball and uses different combo moves to force defenders into these decisions like he does here, tricking Keon Johnson into switching his stance with an in and out dribble, baiting him for a drive. As soon as Mann sees daylight off the trickery, it's too late to recover. Man is an ankle breaker, has the ball on a string. He can dance with the rock. The shift and shake always keeps defenders guessing, and when they guess wrong, Trey will stop on a dime, pull back, and give you a front row seat to a buried jumper. But man's most deadly weapon is the step back jumper, a favorite of the league's scoring assassins. Man loves to reject screens and get a little momentum driving left, and while the defense plays catch up mode, Trey is beating you to the spot, stopping and stepping back into a knockdown. And while the mid-range shot isn't going to be a big part of most prospects game in the league, Mann uses it to leverage his unpredictability as a shooter, as he's just as slithery and dangerous from the in-between. When NBA games get tight and teams need a bucket, the mid-range becomes uber important and with so many teams playing in a drop, that extra space is an invitation for easy points especially for a dude that was in the 90th percentile as an off-the-bounce shooter. The one shooting area that Trey Mann will need to improve on at the next level, though, is as an off-the-ball threat. While Mann finished at 40% overall behind the arc due to his strong off-the-bounce game, he was only a 35% shooter in catch-and-shoot scenarios. We've seen how deadly guys like Steph and Trey Young are when they're playing off other playmakers. Getting easy opportunities off the ball is going to be super important for Mann, especially early on as he may not be given the keys right away. But despite the percentages, I think he'll be fine long term. His form is good and spot shooting is one of the easiest things for a shooter to improve on at the next level. Equally as important as that off the bounce shooting for a guard prospect is the float game, and Mann's floater is smooth. He uses that handle to maneuver his way to his spots and then drop in those teardrops over the outstretched arms of the big. And at the next level, he'll have to do a lot of that because he'll have guys like Rudy Gobert and Anthony Davis waiting for him at the rim. And that brings us to Trey's at the rim finishing. Man finished nearly 60% of his close twos during his sophomore campaign and certainly flashed some promising finishing skills like going straight into the body of the big and finishing through contact. But I do have my concerns about his finishing at the next level. Despite the bounce Mann showed during his Combine Pro Day, he doesn't have much vertical pop that is functional in-game, and he had trouble at times finishing with big athletic rim protectors. Mann's a below-the-rim guy. He doesn't have that same finesse touch around the hoop that you've come to see from a guy like Kyrie. And he's a little predictable as he heavily favors finishing at the rim with his right hand. He'll need to work on those parts of his at the rim game to truly thrive as a three level scorer at the next level. But scoring isn't the only thing you're looking for out of your point guard, right? You'd maybe like to see some playmaking too. And this lack of playmaking is why Mann isn't being talked about as a consensus lottery guy. 
Trey Mann only averaged three and a half assists a game this season. While Mann could cook with the best of them in isolation situations, he had trouble leveraging that attention into making plays for his teammates. Oftentimes, he'd find himself dancing a little too much, just pounding the air out of the ball, only passing when he buried himself in no man's land. He sometimes looked like the guy at the pickup game that could really fill it up, but also maybe was not so much fun to play with. Now that's not to say that he didn't show flashes. Looks like these, where he made a quick decision to get his teammate involved while the defense focused on him, is what you want to see more of. You're probably not going to see a lot of those Luka, Trey Young, next level reads to the corner at ISO situations from Trey Man. It's going to be mostly driving kicks. However, I do think Trey has some untapped potential as a pick and roll passer, and I fully expect Man to run more pick and rolls at the next level. Trey was much more willing a passer off ball screens and had good chemistry finding his bigs on pops and rolls when he got going downhill. Man also showed some fun stuff as a playmaker in transition, where his rebounding prowess and grab-and-go ability was on full display. Most developing playmakers look better in transition, as there's more room to operate, and Man played unselfishly when he was running the break or dropping hit-ahead dimes. I don't think Trey Mann is going to be a big-time assist guy, but we've seen guys like Zach Levine make big strides in their playmaking as they develop, and given the pace, space, and the flashes out of the pick-and-roll, I think Trey Mann will be perfectly adequate as a playmaker as he develops in the NBA. Moving to the other side of the ball, Trey is, let's call it adequate. One-on-one, -on -one, Mann moves his feet, he plays hard, and he doesn't really take many plays off. He does a good job contesting shooters out on the perimeter and will try to lead his man into the help. But he also doesn't have the physical tools to be an impact player. He doesn't have the lateral quickness and strength of a Davion Mitchell, and he doesn't have the length of a Moses Moody. So even given the good fundamentals, he'll still be at a defensive disadvantage in the NBA, as his length won't bother a shooter like Donovan Mitchell, and he'll have trouble stopping someone like Kyle Lowry from bullying him to the hoop. As a team defender, I thought he was more nuanced than he's probably been given credit for. He has a good understanding of off-ball principles, he doesn't chase his man on the weak side, allowing him to slide over and give baseline help. He knows when to cover the hoop on fronts, and then we even see him push his teammate into his rotation on the X out. He does a good job digging and recovering, he'll position himself to be in position to do his job. He's not going to be a big-time stocks guy, and his defensive metrics won't lead him to any all-NBA defensive teams. But the goal is to be able to play on a string, to where you won't get hurt by having him on the floor, and he should be able to do that. While there's been some recent buzz around Trey Mann, it still feels like he's being slept on a bit. He's certainly got his warts and areas to improve on, but the base skills that he'll bring with him as a rookie are such important skills for NBA scorers. And while he isn't one of the most athletic prospects in the class, it's skill that has really shined in the modern NBA. You can't deny the shot making and self-creation ability, and if he ever becomes even a decent playmaker, you're looking at one of the best value picks in the 2021 NBA Draft.